koalas feed on both grasses and browse, so the edge zones along forested islands and open floodplains provide them with a the perfect habitat. This dietary adaptability has led to its success in southern Africa, and it is one of the most abundant antelopes. It's easy to take them for granted because of their population, but it is an exceptionally attractive creature, almost perfectly proportioned, and the herds are a joy to watch, especially the babies. Botswana zebra are the virtual zebra, the wild horse of the African plains, and their beauty as they graze in the herds is one of Botswana's most photogenic sights. Zebras associate in family herds called harems, which contain one dominant stallion, mares, and their foals. Harem size is not large due to the difficulty of defending females. Zebra often associate with other herds of blue villabeers for the purpose of additional security through extra eyes and ears, also known as a symbiotic relationship. Zebra are typically the first animals to enter recent rainfall areas and they trample and crop the tallest grasses, making the shorter, fresh grasses preferred by villabeers and other grazers more easily accessible. Together with the zebra, they form the great herds of Botswana and the only remaining migration of zebras in the country. Spotted hyenas are the bite stronger than any other animal in Africa, including a lion, and can be particularly dangerous in packs. The relationship between lions and spotted hyenas in areas where they coexist is unique in its complexity and intensity. There is an age-old conflict between lion and hyena. Lions will attack them at every opportunity. They will often fight and steal each other's kills. Though hyenas are popularly assumed to be opportunistic scavengers, profiting from the lion's hunting abilities, it is quite often the case that the reverse is true. Lions once roamed much of the African continent, but recent studies suggest that lion populations may have decreased nearly 90% in just one past decade, with fewer than 20,000 remaining in just a handful of countries. Lionesses usually have litters up to six cubs and give birth undercover, keeping cubs hidden and returning to the pride when cubs are one or two months old. The lioness moves her cubs to a new den site several times a month, carrying them one by one by the nape of the neck to prevent scent from building up in a single den site and thus avoiding the attention of predators that may harm the cub. Cubs stay with their mother for at least two years. Young lions first display stalking behavior around three months of age. They don't participate in hunting until they're almost a year old. Hippo bulls will often open their mouths to display their tremendous fangs. This is a way of showing dominance. They have a tremendous bite. It has been recorded that crocodiles have been bitten in two by a large hippo bull. Hippos are responsible for the largest number of human killings. What usually happens is that people, campers or local residents will make a fire on a river bank. Hippos, for some reason, do not like fires and they will go straight for it, trample it and if somebody's in the way, too bad. A hippo cow in heat will of course attract all the hippos in the area, but mating will only take place with the dominant bull. And this semi-aquatic animal spends much of his day lying in water, but it emerges at night to move to feeding grounds which can be up to 20 to 25 kilometers away. An adult hippopotamus can remain in the water for up to six minutes. The hippos are extremely vocal, and its soaring grunts and snorts constitute one of the typical sounds of an African night. An interesting aspect of hippo movements in the Okavango Delta is the fact that their constant moving clears the channel from overgrowth. The famed leopard Lacadima resides here. Documentary makers Derek and Beverly Jobert started shooting the life of this leopard from an eight days old cub in the wilds of Mambo, Botswana. Then named her Lacadima, which means light from the sky in Botswana's national language, Setswana. The Jobert couple spent three and a half years closely watching the life of Lacadima to create this remarkable documentary. One particularly moving and unexpected episode occurs as Lakadima nears adulthood. She kills a mother baboon only to find a young baby still clinging to her. Instead of killing the baby baboon, Lakadima lies down protectively around it and lifts it to safety at the approach of a scavenging hyena. She protects the baby all night from falling down. The two cuddle up and go to sleep. 
Unfortunately, the baby baboon, being so weak, dies that night, and Lakadima left the baby to resume her role as predator, feeding on the mother baboon's body. But the event rather rewrote the theory of the law of the jungle. We arrive with the Jobers in the next vehicle filming their documentary to witness the lessons of the hunt with Lakadima, this feisty cub learning to survive the wilds of Botswana. We get an extraordinary look at how this solitary species raises its young. The two have formed a strong bond, playing like siblings. When she was five months old, she learns to kill a prey, a live impala brought by her mother. The mother leopard uses all her skill and patience to teach her young cub the lessons of pinning down the prey. Lakadima wasn't sure what to do with the baby impala at first, playing curiously, then attacking ineffectually. Her mother guided her uncomplaining through every step of the kill, until at last Lakadima learned that living animals can become a meal.